If you haven't heard, myself and the crew over at my podcast, The Pro Audio Suite, have collaborated with Centrance to create our very own audio interface that's specifically designed for voiceover actors. It's called the Passport VO, and it is an amazing product that we want to bring to the world, but we cannot do it without reaching a special goal. We have to have pre-sold 100 units in order for Centrance to put this product into production. I'll tell you, there are just no audio interfaces that check every single box that's really important to a voiceover actor. And this thing also replaces multiple pieces of gear in a studio, like a mic mute switch, a mic switcher. So you have the ability to switch between two microphones at any time with the press of a button, each one of them at the right gain. It has two audio interfaces inside the box. So one is dedicated to recording and the other one dedicated to communications like Zoom and Source Connect. You can do playbacks. It's all built in. Head over to Centrance.com slash PassportVO if you're interested in picking up one. Thanks for listening, everybody. This is George the Tech. I hope you have a great one. George the Tech. I'm over here at Zoom, and uh, they have a 32-bit float audio interface. And to tell me about it, Samuel. How you doing, Samuel? Hey, doing well. How you doing? Good, man. Good, man. My people are voiceover actors, so... We so, want that set and forget it, never have to think about it ever. Exactly, and I think voiceover artists is one place this really shines. Um, one, because uh, the 32 flow system makes the setup easy, plug in USB, there's no gain dials, just plug in your microphones, put on phantom power if you need it, you come over to your computer, and you've got this mix control software. You can set the level in here, but this is not a gain adjustment, and that's because in 32-bit float, you don't need to set the gain, but you can uh, record loud enough that you can't clip, which means even if I take this fader, which all this is, and turn it all the way up, and I record some audio that seems to be very clipped, I can take that audio, and rather than lose it because it was clipped, I can just bring the volume down within my mix engine, and it sounds exactly as it would have if I had had that level set correctly. So 32-bit flow is gonna capture the entire dynamic range at an equal quality and high enough that you can't clip that it doesn't matter what happens at the time of recording, you'll be able to adjust it to where you need it to afterwards. Now, obviously you're probably gonna set up to hopefully not have to do extra work after you record to get things sounding perfect, but especially in voiceover work, there can be a sudden change, and that sudden change can cause you to lose a take or to need to redo that part, and this will just eliminate any concern with that, and it allows you to take your eyes off of the level meters. You don't even have to worry about yeah, these, it. these guys are recording themselves. Exactly, you're recording yourself. You don't want to look at the level meter. You want to focus on the creation you're making, and uh, 32-bit float is the ultimate way to do that. How about the headphone monitoring? How do you handle it? So, um, so you've got um, one output and a knob on there. This is a very loud um, headphone amp compared to most audio interfaces, 100 milliwatts per channel control it from the software? Uh, so um, your DAW is going to output to it in the standard mode, but you can turn on direct monitoring, and that is going to turn on in the software mixer, this section, where you can adjust the level and pan for your direct monitor. Oh, nice. That's really important. Absolutely. So uh, you have that, you have a loopback built in, and you even can in here switch to streaming mode, and it will combine your two inputs and send them to both the left and right channel. So if you're using a streaming software, um, if you weren't in that mode, you would get input one in the left, input two in the right, streaming mode, just gets everything in both channels. So uh, Streaming is what most of us would use for voiceover. We're doing mostly, mon almost all mono. Right, right. How does the loopback uh, function? There's a couple of ways to do loopback. How does it work? will let you play back a take and have it be sent back out on the USB. So it goes, to, like if you're on Zoom, like the other Zoom? Yeah. If you're in Zoom conference? So the purpose of this loopback is primarily to say you're doing a stream and you have some audio from a DAW or from um, a YouTube video or any other sound source on your computer that you're looking to mix into your microphones and send to the stream together or send to your recording software together. Right. Um, so that loop, once you activate that loopback, it's gonna take any computer audio and mix it in with the inputs and then combine it all into a single feed for, uh, for streaming or recording. How does the, because there's no preamp gain, is it just like a very clean ultra wideband 
preamp or like it's so it can, how many decibels of range can the preamp handle so it's not that um inside is a dual ad converter so it's not that there's no gain it's that you don't have to set it those two ad converters have a set gain and between the two of them oh, um God. they're able to uh capture all of the audio with a low noise floor and uh and then you can edit afterwards as uh, as you need okay so there's yeah. two different stages or it's like two different split. levels, right. Yeah. So like if a high a volume high signal level. comes in, it will choose the lower one. Right. If a low volume signal comes in, it will choose a higher one. But in the use, totally you would never see that, you know, seamless. you never see it happening. Excellent. Cool. Thanks for the explanation. Absolutely. Thank you very much for stopping by. Yeah, thanks.